I need to make an apology to everyone I told to brine meat before you cook it. I have failed you. When I first started this channel, I wanted to do an episode on brining. For years, I had brined chickens, turkeys, and other poultry. I had brined lean cuts of pork, and I had also been pleased enough with the results to suggest this method to a lot of my friends and family who were struggling to keep their lean cuts of poultry and pork juicy and flavorful. I would have continued to do this for many years if I didn't stumble across the idea of dry brining. Now, it's pretty much all I do, and I want to introduce you to it as an alternative to wet brining. So first, what is brining? Brining food for preservation has been around for centuries. We still do this today with olives and pickles and even fermented foods like sauerkraut. The process of brining is when we store foods in a salt water solution. The salt water inhibits the growth of the bacteria and thus, without refrigeration, you can store all kinds of foods for quite some time in brine. When quick brining something, which is putting it in salt water for a short time before cooking it, this type of brining imparts flavor and helps keep foods that were low in fat moist when cooked on high heat. What's happening is you're not just adding water to the food, you're adding salt water and sometimes other flavorings. And the salt here is the key. Water is expelled from the food when it starts to heat up. The muscle fibers tighten and the water is basically squeezed out of the food. If you add salt, this affects the muscle fibers and makes them retain some of that water. So in one step, you can make sure your food has enough seasoning and stays juicy. The problem is, is that instead of concentrating the good flavors of the natural moisture in the food, you're expelling those and replacing those with water and sometimes flavorings. This is where dry brining comes in. Instead of just replacing the moisture with salt water, we just salt the food and let it sit in the fridge we let it sit like this for a few hours or up to a day ahead. This way, we rely on the natural juices in the food to mix with the salt and form its own brine. This dry brining works on other meats too, on lean fish as well as beef. In fact, a lot of people do this with beef and they do what they call dry aging in their own fridge with it. So to start out, we're using pork chops I bought from the butcher. They're in the same package and close to the same width. First, we're gonna make our brine. We're using three cups of water to three tablespoons of kosher salt and uh, one tablespoon of brown sugar. I'm gonna mix the salt into the two cups of room temperature water with the sugar. Then I'm gonna add ice cubes to that once it's fully incorporated. I added eight ounces of ice for the last cup of water. I do that so the pork doesn't get too warm as it sits in the liquid. I put my chop in the Tupperware, pour the brine over it, seal it, and this goes in the fridge. For the dry brine, I'm just salting the outside of the chop with diamond kosher salt. As you can see, I'm being very generous here. I put the chop on a rack without covering it. I put it in my fridge next to the brine chop, and they will both sit in there for three hours. After three hours, I preheated my oven to 375 degrees convection, and then I got a cast iron pan nice and hot. I also patted the two chops dry with a paper towel. I put a little oil in the pan, put the chops in there, and let them sear for a few minutes, and then flipped them over. I cooked them longer on the second side, because that's going to be the side that's up in the oven. I put in probe thermometers in each and then put them in the oven. I cook them until it registered the proper temperature. For me, that's 154 degrees Fahrenheit or 68 Celsius. I pulled them out of the oven, let them sit for a few minutes before I cut into them. Okay. Brined. Dry brined. So let's try the brined pork chop first. All right. So as you can see, it's perfectly cooked, right? 
You know, I like mine medium well, so there's this tiniest, 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 tiniest bit of, of like, like a faint whiff of pink in there. Some people like them a little less cooked than that. I am uh, of the mind that it, it, I like my pork a little more tough, a little more toothy. So let's give this a shot. Good flavor, good seasonings. Uh, it's fine. I mean, it tastes like a fine pork chop. It's, it's not anything you're going to write home about. Certainly better than anything I grew up with. I know I grew up with uh, hockey pucks. So it's, it's juicy. There's a, lot of, uh, there's a lot of moisture in it. So let's try the other one. This is the dry brined pork chop. And I can already tell just by the texture, this is more springy. This feels meaty. And again, it's, it's cooked perfectly, just very, very, very faint uh, pink in there. And you could just tell just by, just by touching it, you can tell there's a difference in texture in the meat. It's meaty, it's flavorful. It's such a deep flavor in comparison. This tastes watered down. This tastes flavorful. To everybody that I said, brine, because for, for years I was saying, brine, go ahead and brine. Brine is a great way to, to get a flavorful and juicy pork chop or chicken. I'm sorry. I apologize. Dry brine. Dry brine, not only is it juicy, right? It, it still has all that flavor. It's more tender and it's just got that essence of meaty flavor that you absolutely do not get in this pork chop. This pork chop is adequate and it's juicy, but it's almost to the point where it's watered down, where it's got that really sort of weak flavor to it. After tasting this, it tastes like nothing. I beg your forgiveness. All those people, all those years, I said brine. I really should be saying dry brine. Dry brine your pork chops. Dry brine your chicken. Dry brine your turkey. It, it takes the same amount of time. This was three hours, both of them, three hours. This lost moisture, got more meaty, enhanced its flavor all in three hours. This got more moisture. That's it. And it didn't enhance the flavor. In fact, I think it takes away from the flavor. I would prefer a pork chop that wasn't brined, in fact, over a pork chop that was brined. So I would, I would prefer no seasonings whatsoever, taken directly out of the refrigerator, put on the, on the burner and cooked that way over a brined pork chop. I would never do that again. All right, that's gonna wrap it up for this week. Please like, share, subscribe. I know I say that every time, but please do it. Helps me, uh, helps the algorithm, helps get me seen, so please do it. All right, that's gonna wrap it up. Catch you next time. Till then, season liberally.